everybody, Andrew here. What you were listening to was the solo of Midnight Driver, the third song on the Power War Fantastic record. And uh, we're going to use this song today to explore a new way of playing chords, uh, in this case for the solo section of the song. Um, the song is in G, it's actually a very simple song, it almost always stays in G and then moves to C, so very simple keys, uh, very, very simple uh, structure. And the riff, the main riff is just a G. With a, with a, with a raised fourth, it's, a, it's, it's kind of a, you know, exotic kind of sound. But it sounds really good and uh, it, the only thing it does though is kind of limits where you can go with a song. You know, if, if you have a verse like that then, uh, you know, you can't really move too much uh, without a deep change in mood. And that, actually that's what the song does for the chorus, it really opens up. But this kind of rhythm and this kind of riff, uh, it doesn't let you move, you know, as you would normally probably in G. It would go. You know, if you want to play a very original chord progression, you know, there you go. But you, you can't really do that effectively when you're playing such a, you know, closed uh, kind of rhythm. And so for the chorus, I do open, it, the song opens up, uh, goes to C, and uh, you know, you can hear, the, you can listen to the song for it. But then for the lead, I really wanted to do something completely different. And uh, so what I did was pick four chords. I mean, I kind of, you know, uh, consciously, I didn't do it just randomly. But it's four chords, and the, the peculiar thing about them is that they move chromatically. So the, the solo goes, it starts in B flat. And then after a while, it goes to B. Then it goes to C. Then it goes to C sharp. Right, and uh, so that's that's it. the cool thing about the solo is this that you can you can actually play on top of very very pretty much of anything. If you if you can play over four uh, chromatic chords, you can play pretty much on anything. The, the problem is how do you fit a scale over the four chords? For example, if you uh, scales do share chords. For example, if you play um, a B flat and a B, then you could be playing the seven and the eighth chord in. Um, in, uh, in B, you could be playing the third and the fourth chord, you know, then B flat could be the third chord, it would actually be called A sharp, and then B would be the fourth chord of, you know, whatever, whatever scale would have the root there, all right? And uh, that's one way to see it. So you could actually look at it this way. You could have one scale that is shared by the B flat and the B, and then another scale that is shared by the C and the C sharp. So that's one option. You could also try to figure out if there's any way you can uh, pair them differently. So for example, I could have a scale that I use when the chords are B-flat and C. Could be any, any scale that includes a B-flat and a C, all right? And these are fifth chords, so they're not major or minor, so you have quite a lot of room there. And then you could use another scale that fits over the B and the C-sharp, right? So there's plenty of them too. The problem with that is that you'll be establishing a scale here, then moving to another one, then trying to go back to the first one, and then again to the next one. And so to the ear, that sounds forced. Um, it won't sound bad necessarily if you're fitting the chords, then it will sound good. But it will sound very forced, so it will sound like as if you're just pasting melodies on top of chords, which is never a you know very good idea. And the other option is to do, well, one more option is to pair three of them, and then just leave one out, and just do something over it. So for example, I could, ch I could pick a sharp, B, and C sharp, you know, and for example, play this as if we were in, um, for example, A sharp Phrygian, or, or, you know, the third, this is as if this were the third chord of a major scale, so I would fit this, this, and this together. I could pretend this is the seventh chord, they were in B, so I'm playing A sharp, which would be a diminished chord, I could play the B, and then I would play the, the C sharp. So I could, I can fit three chords of the, three of these chords in a, in a single uh, chord progression. The problem is you'll be switching between modes all the time. You know, if, if, you, if you're pretending that we're in, uh, for example, they were in B, then it will sound like um, A sharp, Locrian, and then right away it will sound like um, B major, and then it will sound like uh, C sharp, Dorian, all in a very, very tiny spot. And it will sound very weird. And uh, besides, before we get to this last score, we have to go through the B, to, uh, through the C, which is uh, also very strange because it does have, it has nothing in common with B major. So you know, if we pretend we're in B major for this three, then B major has five sharps, and then we go to C major, and it has no sharps. So the, 
only two notes are left and so it will sound like you're forcing your solo onto uh, the chords. So you know there are ways to do it if you play few notes for example you can kind of pretend that you're kind of you know hovering on top of the chords that's one option but since we're talking about this song let's see what we did on this song. Uh, the idea here was to actually take each chord and use one scale per chord but at the same time keeping an eye out for uh, sharing as many notes as possible between one scale and the next. Okay, so what, we, what I did here was use a simple pentatonic on the B flat. I'm doing. Almost pentatonic. It's almost all pentatonic scale. And then when I go to B, I'm doing uh, a Dorian phrase. Oh, wait, uh, on Dorian I'm doing. So that's pretty much what I'm doing. I'm moving a bit out of Dorian, but that's the main focus is Dorian. And then when I go to, uh, to C, I apply a minor chord. Okay. And a bit of a strange scale there. And then when I go to C sharp, I go back to the pentatonic. Okay, so I'm, I'm kind of sandwiching two strange scales and two strange licks within two very identifiable sounds which are the pentatonic sounds and uh, it helps a lot because your ear responds well to the pentatonic we talked about this before uh, blues you know rock and roll comes from the blues and we're kind of expected to hear the pentatonic scale and so it kind of it allows for the song to flow um, and, and uh, still provide a lot of difference between the first section of the song and the last one which are just verses and choruses with the central section that is, um, you know, uh, really, really moving. It, it moves a lot. And it creates a lot of tension and release, and then when you get back to the verse, you want to hear the verse, and uh, you're ready for it, and it doesn't get boring, hopefully. Okay, so that's one neat trick. Uh, the main idea you can take away from this video is that any chord progression, anything, even four chords, uh, you can get away with, you can solo on it. The thing is, if you're playing C, sharp, C major, E minor, G major, then you just stick a C major scale on top of it. But if uh, your chords don't quite fit, then you really have to figure out what you're going to do with each of them. And there's plenty of ways to get this wrong, all right? So you have to really uh, try it out. If you want to have a short exercise, you can do this. Just pick four chords, chromatic, and try to improvise on top and see if you can come up with something cool. All right, right now actually I'm gonna record the next video for this series and uh, this will be posted as soon as possible. Okay, see you later, bye bye.